Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 342, uh, 3, uh, 343. I'm going to make sure I... Uh, it's been a long day, folks. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually I, would, usually I wouldn't make videos earlier than this. But unfortunately, what happened was, an unfortunate circumstance that happened was, um, after I got out of work, I, you know, I was a little bit behind in my work because we had, I had a lot of, you know, projects to do and all that, but at work and cleaning projects to make sure that everybody uh, was safe and, you know, and plus we were short-staffed, so it's like I'm basically by myself from 6 in the morning to 10 in the, in the morning doing all uh, sorts of uh I mean, I'm stirring my hot chocolate. And, I, and then I got out later, and then, mm, then unfortunately, what happened was when I, uh, I went to Taco Bell to get lunch, and then when I went to pull out in the mall, and um, near, I was going to go across the street to um, stop a shop to get some uh, drinks. Tire went flat. Left side, driver's side, left um, driver's side front I was like I was like oh wonderful and then the first thing I did was call AAA they said oh, they'll come and fix it and that's fine I let my parents know what's going on and then the poor and then the guy couldn't get it out because it was frozen in and all that For all the days to have a flat tire it had to be the coldest day of the year I was like what did I hit that caused my tire to go flat hmm and I gotta tell you, it was I was not having a good I was not having a great day at all. So we had the car towed eventually and my dad says he'll fix it. And you know, I'm just I'm just thankful that I'm just thankful that I'm home. <laughs> it's been a long day and uh, I was kinda hoping to uh, make some jokes about how cold it was and make some I like, do an invitation of Jim Carrey talking about Nantuck. <laughs> Nantuck and I, <laughs> and all that, but I'm home, the car is home, it's, I mean, I'm very warmed up, I'm ready to go, I'm gonna get ready for Vengeance Day tonight, but before then, I got three episodes of this show I gotta do, and I'm gonna try to do them all, and, uh, as you know, we're gonna talk about what happened last night on SmackDown, and on NXT Level Up, the final level up before Vengeance Day, which is tonight, the lovely Kayla Braxton tried to, uh um, Trying to interview the bloodline, but Paul Heyman decided to say something about it. So, so there it is. Mm. Mm. And um, and uh, so Paul Heyman decided to get on Caleb Braxton's case because he, in Paul Heyman's mind, he thinks that Caleb Braxton's got some sexual thing for him. Dightly doubt it. Don't be a creep, Paul Heyman. Don't be a creep. Anyways, um, and then the tag team titles, uh, uh, finals, uh, number one contenders for the tag team title tournament finals. Braun Strowman and Ricochet took on Imperium, and it got to the point where uh, Ricochet was starting something with, with Gunta, and referee injected Gunta from the arena, uh, from ringside. Braun Strowman and Ricochet took advantage of that situation and ended up picking up the victory over over Imperium to challenge the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship next week. More on that situation. And then they had uh, Kayla Braxton, once again, Kayla Braxton's been at work, interviewing Charlotte Flair, but Sonya Deville interrupts her. Um, starts running her mouth again, thinking that Sonya, Sonya Deville, thinking that Charlotte Flair, that she's going to beat um, Charlotte Flair. Sonya Deville thinks she's going to beat Charlotte Flair. 
Anyways, they had a racing matchup at the L.A. Coliseum to, to uh, promote WrestleMania. Rey Mysterio went up against his son Dominic, and um, they had a they had a race, and they were in, you know, Dominic was insulting and uh, talking trash and all that and whatnot. They had a race. They had an actual race. Michael Waltrip was was doing the um, was doing the uh, you know the flags and all that, and. Uh, and Rey Mysterio won the race. And Dominic was complaining. He goes, you know, you wouldn't be doing that if Mommy was here. Oh, my God, great. You know, you know him and uh, Ray Ripley, come on. I'm telling you, them, them two guys are going to go out at WrestleMania. I'm telling you. So, uh, Charlotte Flair defended the title against Sonya Deville. And Charlotte Flair made Sonya Deville tap out and retain the title. Roman Reigns asked Jimmy Uso about his brother Jay. He said, no word from him. We haven't heard anything from him. So Sokoa was kind of worried or nothing. And Roman Reigns was kind of concerned. The Brawling Brutes took on the Viking Raiders. And it was a... This was a heck of a fight. When I saw, you know, Rich Holland and Butch against uh, Eric and Ivar, I said, this is going to be a fight. But the Viking Raiders did win. But as they were celebrating, Seamus and Drew McIntyre decided to beat up the Raiders after the match. So there you go. Bray Wyatt was watching the pitch black match and Uncle Howdy approaches him and he turns around and shoom, camera went off. Fatal 4-Way Women's Elimination qual uh, cha Chamber Qualifiers. In fact, I think that's why I think Adam Pearce mentioned too. One for SmackDown, one for Raw. Now, you know, the one for Raw is uh, Michin Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, Carmella, and Piper Niven. Meanwhile, the uh, SmackDown version was Shotzi, uh, Natalia, Shayna Baszler, and Zelina Vega, and Natalia, making her return to the ring after three months, has won the matchup. Jimmy Uso and Sol Sokoa couldn't get a home of Jay Uso, and then, and then Roman Reigns goes, "You, you go find him. You go talk to him. You go find him." Roman Reigns goes, "I got to handle business out here." So Re Roman Reigns came out to the Greenville crowd, which, by the way, I want to give a shout out to my friend Jordy Scow. A.K.A. J-Man's Legit, A.K.A. Jordan Little. He was at the event with his father. His father had a great time. In fact, I've been, I've been told that he may be making an appearance for the AEW Rampage Live reaction next this coming next Friday. So I'm excited about that. And always want to hear from the good, the good doc to see what's up. Then, um, and as he uh, uh, addresses the Greenville crowd, Sami Zayn attacks Reigns. From behind, spears him, and then Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa attacks him. But beforehand, Sami Zayn grabbed the microphone and said, Hey, you and me, Montreal. In an elimination chamber match for the titles. And so Jimmy Uso and Sokoa attacked him, and Roman Reigns said, Hold on, hold on. I accept your challenge. So that match is going to happen. The Universal title on the line. Former honorary Us. The former, mate. Let me let me reiterate. The former honorary U, Sammy Sammy Zayn, will be challenging Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. All right, so that ended SmackDown, and uh, all right, NXT level up. So Ruka went one on one with the a new look for Lash Legend, and but So Ruka with her Soul Snatcher. Awesome maneuver. Wins the matchup. Kelly Kincaid interviewed uh, Josh Briggs, Brooks uh, Jensen, Fallon Henley, and Keanu James. Well, uh, Brooks Jensen was too busy fawning over uh, Keanu James. Kelly Kincaid was in a, in a Josh Briggs. Says, we got to get focused. These ladies are focused for the tag team titles and everything else. So, uh, so they got to stay focused. They got to go and, and Br hey, Brooks, we got to get our match up. We got to get our match going. All right. And uh, Josh Briggs, actually, Oba Femi um, went up against Hobby Air Bernal, Big Body Hobby. Or as I like to call him, Big Mouth Hobby, because the guy can't keep his mouth shut. And Bernal won with the holding of the tights against the bigger Oba Femi. Then you got the tag team matchup, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. And against Zion Quinn and Bronco Nima. And... Briggs and Jensen did end up winning that matchup. Hopefully that will give the ladies a little bit of confidence going into tonight's Vengeance Day. 
And that is all the time we have on this episode of episode 343 of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977. Bearing that in mind, we got another episode coming up. We're going to talk about what happened on AEW Rampage last night as well. And I'm going to and I'm going to try to get everything together because on the next on another episode we got a re- another request from Godfather Dom Dominic William uh, Dominic Williams says we're going to do a little bit of Donkey Kong Arcade Edition. That's right. I don't know if I'm going to break Romy's uh, four hundred sixty five thousand dollar point record. What 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 did I say thousand dollar point? I meant to say what I meant to say. I don't know if I'm going to be able to break um, the score of over uh, six uh, four hundred sixty five thousand points. Of Jerome Latimer, aka Romy2184. But I'm going to do my best, and the highest of score is over 20,000 points. I think almost 30,000 points. Well, I want to see how I do when I play Donkey Kong. <laughs> Something like that. So, so I'll see you in the next episode of Eric Lehman Shenanigans of 1977. So, until that next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.